everyone. So this is going to be, oh, remember we didn't do this graphing part, so we're going to do that first before we get into today's lesson. All right. Um, so this is on page 137, right here, 137. If you want to flip to that page right now, I'll wait for you, or you could just press pause. Okay, so we're going to sketch the graph, and we're going to label the axis of symmetry and the vertex. So we're doing, if I can, <laughs> if I can do a straight line, which apparently I can't. All right, so we're going to do this guy right here. So if you look at this function right here, f of x is equal to 4x squared minus 9. Um, we're going to try and find, remember it's in standard form. So we're going to, what are we doing? We're going to find the axis of symmetry. So I'm going to just do my work right here. AOS, not AOX. <laughs> That's an S. Very strange looking S. Okay, which means axis of symmetry. Remember x is equal to negative b over 2a. That's what that is. And so uh, remember my a is going to be 4 and my b is 0. My c is going to be negative 9. Right? It's good to just label those uh, in advance. Kind of helps us out. So x equals negative b, which is 0. I remember it's 0 because we don't have a middle term. Middle, there's no x, just regular x. So that's why we know it's a 0. Uh, over 2a, so 2 times 4. Honestly, it doesn't matter what the bottom number is as long as it's not 0, right? We don't want to divide by 0, but x is equal to just 0, okay? So we know that the AOS is right here on the y-axis. I like AOS, okay? Now that we know the AOS, we can find the vertex, right? Uh, we know that x value is zero so we're just literally so i'm gonna write down actually let me write it with a different color just to so we could that's slightly different okay that's not that much different but it is different it's plum that's what it says so we're gonna go f of zero is equal to four times zero squared minus nine now if you're wondering miss lee where are you getting all these numbers from they're right up here remember the function that it was given to us that guy right there yeah that's where we're getting that from so then from here, we're like, oh, okay, so this is just going to be zero. So this is just going to equal negative nine. So the vertex is zero, negative nine. So zero at negative nine, which is right there. I'm trying to make it big so you can see it fairly well. So that's the vertex. Okay, we did that. Um, oh, we need to actually graph it. So we're going to use a property of equality to identify the zeros. So I'm going to go with the roots, which we know as zeros. So I'm just going to put that on the left-hand side. I would write it on the right-hand side, but I have no more room. So uh, we're going to remember that's when y is equal to 0. So 4x squared minus 9. And what do we do? We add 9 to both sides. We just solve, right? And then we're going to get 9 is equal to 4x squared. And remember, we're going to divide both sides by 4. So we're going to have 9 over 4 is equal to x squared. How do you get rid of that square? Or root it, right? So we're gonna go boom, boom. If you're like, wait, Miss Lee, you forgot. Yep, plus or minus. Don't forget, whenever we're square rooting both sides, we have to include that plus or minus. I'm just gonna put my x on the left hand side, and that's gonna be plus or minus. And square root of nine, that's three. Square root of four, that's two. So it's gonna be plus or minus one and a half, basically, is what it is. So I'm going to go one and a half, like right about there, and then negative one and a half. So it goes through those two points. We're going to just make that parabola. So it's going to be like very skinny. Okay, not as wibbly wobbly as mine. <laughs> Assume that they're not wibbly wobbly. It's just straight. Okay, and it should be going through those roots, and that's what that would look like. All right, and, um, and it says right here, we're gonna write them as a difference of squares if you really wanna write, it. let me just show you. So remember that this could be written, so number, where's my mouse, okay, here it is. So for A, so if we say f of x is equal to four x squared minus nine, remember these are difference of squares. So what you would say is, well, something squared minus something squared, right? So what is that something squared going to have to be? Well, what's the square root of 4? 2. What's the square root of x squared? 
x, right? So if we go x squared squared, that's going to be 4x squared, right? And then same thing with this 9, that's going to be just 3. So how do we write this out as a factored form? So f of x is equal to 2x, remember, plus 3, 2x minus 3. One of them is going to be a plus, one of them is going to be a minus. does not matter which one. You can switch them if you want to, OK? This would be factored form. Now remember the property, the zero product property right here, zero product property. Remember when we set, so if our we're looking for the zeros, right? 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. If we know this to be true, that means that both of those parentheses, we can set them equal to zero, okay? Because either one of those being equal to zero would make the whole thing equal, equal to zero. So 2x plus 3 is equal to zero. So those 2x minus 3 is equal to zero. How do we solve for this? Go back to your algebra one. Remember, what did you learn? Oh yeah, subtract three on both sides. Oh, I didn't change the color. Oh well. So 2x is equal to negative three divided by two. And what do you get? X is equal to negative three over two. I feel like I've seen this before. Let's try the other one. So add three on both sides. And then 2x is equal to three divided by two. So x is equal to three over two. Where have I seen this before? Oh yeah, over here. Same thing, right? So it's exactly what we had said. So again, proving you once again that this factor form is the same as a standard form. Es mismo. Okay, same. All right. So you can do the same thing with this one right here for B. Let's see if we can do the work. I'm just going to do B. I'm not going to do C. So because um, we're going to come back to this graphing like all the day long. Okay, so we're going to continue doing that. So, because these are just uh, special circumstances, right? Um, so, let's do this. AOS, right, is going to be, remember, A is equal to 1, B is equal to 0, because there is no middle term, and C is equal to negative 2. So, X is equal to negative B. Remember, this is the negative B over 2A. Notice again, AOS, 0. Okay, so again, it's gonna be right here on the axis of symmetry, oh, on the y axis, which is the axis of symmetry. Um, and then we're gonna try to find the vertex. Go vertex, I'll make it vertex. I'm running out of room here. If you wanna write on a separate sheet of paper, you might wanna do that. And then just like fold it up and put it in this note in your, in your book so that you'd get that work, you still have that work. So again, it's gonna be. Uh, f of zero is equal to, and we're just putting a zero over there. So zero squared minus two. So we get zero negative two. Because what's zero minus two? Negative two. So that would be our answer. So zero negative two, there we go, right here. All right. Now let's find the roots. Mm, where can I put the roots? I'll put them right up here. So roots, I'll write it small. So remember, it's going to be x squared minus 2 is equal to 0. Then we're just going to add 2 to both sides. So x squared is equal to 2, right? And how do I get rid of that square? You'll be like, I know, square root. So then we're going to go x is equal to square root of 2. And you'll be like, wait, Miss Lee, you forgot. Do I do that on purpose or not? I don't know. All right, so the, yes, it's the plus or minus square root of two. Okay, what and how do, how do we graph that? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find your calculator. Right here, there's my calculator. Okay, the square root of two. Do you see it? 1.414. <laughs> yeah, so about 1.4, because we can't be that accurate on here. So it's gonna be, x is gonna be equal to plus or minus 1.4. Honestly, I would like I would prefer this answer right here, but when you're graphing, you're going to actually have to have a uh, like a number that we can graph. Like, so what's the square root of two? I don't know, right? So 1.4. So we're going to go literally 1.4. So like right about there, and then 1.4 on the other side, about there. All right, and then we're going to just draw that graph. Try not to make yours pointy or wibbly. 
a lot of you guys are drafted better than mine. So there's that. There's the goodness of that. Okay, so just like that. What would that look like factored? Well, two is not a perfect square. So we're just going to leave it at that. But if you really want to know, it, you can actually factor it. It just looks weird, right? Um, if you want to, like, what's that squared minus squared? Well, x squared, the square root of x squared is just x. So that part's easy. But the two, that one is actually going to be, what's the square root of two? Just square root of two. So literally you can, you don't really have to know this, but I'm just saying you could technically do it this way. I mean, it's not wrong. Right, it is factored. There, done. And then you set it equal to zero and then solve for x in which you would get plus square root of two minus square root of two, same thing, okay? Uh, you didn't have to know that, but extension. All right, um, so now there's that. So now we're gonna go back to our regularly scheduled lesson over here. All right, this is the missing link. This is on page 153. Oh, that was already up here. Uh, we're gonna be focused on factoring today. Super duper duper uper schmooper important, okay? Because factoring, you're gonna be doing that in pre-cal, you're gonna be doing that in calculus, you're gonna be factoring for days. You need, the one thing you need to remember is factoring, okay? You really need to, no factoring. So please put this in your brain. If you don't get it today, try it again tomorrow. Try it again the next day, okay? We're gonna keep on factoring, okay? It's gonna keep on coming back. So don't be like, okay, I will just learn it for now and then I'll forget it. Don't do that. You need to remember this. All right, so for the do now, these are the four questions for the do now. All you need to do is distribute, just distribute them. Please, if you have not done them already, check that you do it. Pause. Did you pause? <laughs> so check your answers here, okay? And uh, you only just remember if you want to do it the box method way, you can totally do it the box method way. Oop, probably don't want to use that color on green. So if you want to do it the box method way, you could totally do it like this. And then you would write x plus one on the left and x plus two on the top. And then you just multiply them out. Okay, so x times x is x squared. One times x is x. x times two is two x. And one times two is two. And then you would just combine like terms. So those would be x squared, two x plus one, or plus x is three x. That's where we're getting three x. And then the plus two, okay? Please check your answers for number three. We kind of did the work right here, right? Um, so it's, yeah. 2x times x, 2x squared, 2x times four, negative eight x, negative three times x, negative three x, negative three times negative four, that's a positive 12, okay? And then you just combine like terms. You always a middle terms you combine, right? Because they're always in this kind of order thing. All right, so these are your answers there. All right, um, uh, learning targets for today, factor out the greatest common factor, the GCF, it is coming back, right, of polynomials. And also we're gonna factor uh, quadratic polynomials to determine the roots of the quadratic equation. Technically we're doing this tomorrow. We're not doing this today. We're gonna just delete that. It's not there, okay? So now we're gonna go down. And so my question was, well, we already know how to solve these kinds of problems, right? Because we just did them. 10 minutes ago. And then, so then what happens if we have something like this where it's not this uh, just one x, the, an x by itself? If we have x's in two different locations, what do we do? Erase it. No, you don't do that. So if you can see right here, um, we're, we're thinking about, okay, maybe we could factor it, right? If we have it in factored form, then we know how to do that. But we have to think, well, how do we get it in factored form? Now, if you could reverse engineer this, right? Remember we got this two by multiplying, right? Multiplying the last two digits, right? So we know these last two digits have to multiply to be a two, okay? You with me so far? We know how to get the first term, right? Because if we multiply the first two num the first two terms, those were, that's how we got the x squared. So it's, it's gotta be x and x, right? X times x is x squared. Well, then how do we get this middle term? Remember the middle term is the one that we were adding up together. Like if you were looking at the boxes that, uh, let me make this. Uh, let's do pink. Ah, uh, come on. It's not letting me do it. One second. Really? You're not going to let me highlight. Let me highlight. Okay. You know what? Pretend I'm highlighting this. It really, oh, see, it'll do that. 
Oh, maybe you just can't see it because the green. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, but that middle term right there, those two that we're adding up together, that is what we want to do. Oh my dear. Okay, so so basically we're saying that this one plus a two, when we add them up, that's going to give me my three x. Okay, so. And then from here, if we're once it's in factor form, we know what to do, right? Just like how we did over here on the right hand side, you would set the x, the x plus two or x plus one is equal to zero, as well as the x plus two is equal to zero, right? You solve for that. Subtract one, subtract one, subtract two, subtract two. And what do you get? X is equal to negative one and negative two, right? So that's one reason why we would want to factor so that it will help us solve these kinds of problems because. We can't do it like how we would normally with uh, like the difference of squares one because like there's only one x here but here there's like two places for x right so that's where we cut it so we're going to try that out so we're going to go to the next page and literally all we did was pull out the gcf okay some things that i want you to note if you have not done this you weren't in a class go do it right now pause and then and then and then do it all right all right so uh right here thank you for pausing and uh, we're pulling out a GCF here. Uh, we pulled out a four here because four is common with the four X as well as the 12. Uh, remember the greatest means it's the biggest. Common means it's the same for both. They have something like, if we have something in common, they, we have something that's similar for both of us, right? Like if we both like ice cream or something like that, then that would be something in common, right? And the factor, factor is like something that goes into that number, right? So the four and the 12, four X and the 12, they have the four in common. You could have said two, but that would have been wrong because that's not the GCF. It would just be the CF, right? Not the GCF, it's not the greatest, it's not the GOAT, okay? Only the four is the GOAT. All right, so then from here, so the B, uh, I don't know if you knew, but you could also take out X's, right? So if they both have an X, then you could take that out. And if there were three, so here you cannot, for C, you cannot take it out an X because uh, the last term there doesn't have an X. It doesn't have an x you can't take it out like it's not common right you're like just doing f like, you know what i mean so there's no no is, there's no common nothing in common about it so you can't do the gcf okay so you have to see look at what does come for all three terms okay if you have three terms if you have four terms you have to look for the common factor for all four terms or five terms or whatever okay so here we pick three this one if you note like that two and 11, there's nothing common. So normally you should just write this, just two X minus 11, we just leave it like that. Cause you could always factor out a one, like one is always a thing, right? So we are, we don't consider that to be a greatest common factor. It has to be something bigger than one, like two. And we don't take out like, I guess we could take out decimals if we really wanted to, but normally it's just whole numbers or integers, I should, I should say. Cause you can take out, if you can see here, like this negative, you could totally take that out. Okay, so, and it's actually preferable if you take out negatives. Your first number should not be negative. Okay, so if there is a negative there, factor that out. Because if you don't, it's gonna just make your factoring a lot more difficult. Okay, a lot more issues. So, um, so once we factor out a negative, then uh, you the, notice this minus does become a plus. Because remember, like when you multiply it back in, negative times an x is your negative x. Negative times seven, that gives you back that minus seven. If this was a minus, that negative times a minus would be a positive and that would not be the same thing, not equivalent, okay? And so the way sometimes some people think about it is, like you look at F, right? What is common with all these three? And they say five, right? Well, how do you get this middle terms, right? The, the middle inside the parentheses. You can uh, think of it two ways. You can think of five times what will give you five X squared, right? Or um, you can ask yourself, okay, if I divide out a five, then what do I have left? And if I divide out a five, that's just gonna be X squared, right? So either way you think about it, it's fine. But the way you can always 100% sure that you're right is if you multiply it back out, you're gonna get the same answer. So if I were to multiply five times X squared, that's five X squared, yay. Five times two X or negative two X, that's negative 10 X, yay. And then five times one, that gives me a five. A lot of people here put in a zero. But if you go five times zero, that's zero. That's not five, right? So that's how you know for sure that it has to be a one. It can't be like two or three because that would not give us a five, all right? Moving on. All right, so this is where I taught you guys the crisscross method way. 
I love this way. Um, if you want to do it the box method way, which is what I'll show you, that is fine. I just like doing it this way. And so I'm going to keep it consistent and just, uh, just refer back to the crisscross method way whenever we do factoring. Okay. Um, and you can use this method for any, for any trinomial. Okay. Um, and technically even binomial. You just can't do it for four terms. Four terms is something completely different. But we're not going to do that right now. So we're good. So here we go. So I just copied this down. So x squared plus 10x plus 16. Okay. And where these ones come from, if you guys remember, that was from the coefficient of the one, uh, coefficient of the x squared, which is one, because there's nothing there. So I asked myself, well, what times what is one? Well, one times one. And then you, the way we get this last term, remember, we multiply two numbers, right? So what two numbers could those be? Uh, well, we could do 1 times 16. So we try this for one of our classes because, I mean, it's true, it's 1 times 16. So now we're going to check it. So 1 times 16 is 16. 1 times 1, that's where the crisscross comes from, is 1. And when I add it up, is 17. Is that the same number as this middle term? Remember, we got to add up the two like terms, right? And you'd be like, no, that's 17, that's not 10. And so we're like, okay, then it's not these numbers. So we tried other numbers, right? So the another number we tried was two and eight, right? Because two and eight also make, um, multiply to 16. So we go one times eight is eight, one times two is two. Add them up, that's 10. Yay, that's the same number. So I'm gonna use this pink color. So this number right here has to be the same as that number right there. Has to be the same, if they're not, then it's not right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go straight across. It's super important that you go straight across. So if not, it's going to be wrong. So I made the greens here and the oranges here. So this is, remember this was the, the one was the coefficient of the x, right? So it's going to be x plus two, right here, x plus two times x plus eight, x plus eight. Or if you want to say one x plus eight, that's fine too. Um, some people might also find it useful. Let me use red or pink. Like, remember, this was the coefficient. So if you want to put x here, you can do that. This is my, like, abbreviated or, like, their other version, right? So x times 16 would be 16x. x times 1 is 1x. You add them, it's 17x, which would not be the same as that. Same thing with this one. This is just the, if you put the x's in front, so x times 2 is 2x. x times 8 is 8x. And we're just literally 10x, and that is the same as that 10x. We're just finding the middle terms. That's what we're doing. Okay, and literally going across x plus two and x plus eight. And there we go. And if you notice right here, this is the graph, right? And notice the roots are here at negative eight and negative two. You're like, wait a minute, that's not the same thing. Well, it is. Remember, because remember we're setting those equal to zero. So we go x plus two is, oh, I don't need the parentheses. I still want to apparently write the parentheses. x plus two is equal to zero x plus 8 is equal to 0, right? And subtract 2 on both sides, subtract 8 on both sides. What do I get? x equal to negative 2, x equals to negative 8. Those are our roots. Oops. Yay. And that's exactly what it goes out to. All right, so crisscross method factoring totally works. So we're going to go, I'm going to skip this page. I'm not going to do it. Okay, we're gonna go over to page, what page is this? 157, right? So um, you guys were given, uh, so I had you guys do the crisscross method. I want you guys to practice it here as well, okay? So, um, and if you, you might need to try a couple different times and that's what you're gonna have to do. Okay, I will, I'm gonna explain, uh, check your answers here because these are what your answers would be. I would just say, uh, I'm gonna explain like, let's say C here. I'm going to just erase this guy. Well, I'll just put it over here. So if we have x squared minus 6x minus 16, right? And so if we want to do the box method, right? And some people went to this right away, and I love that. And so this one right here, so this is x squared. We know that the first term is here. The last term is on this bottom right-hand side. The question is, what goes here, right? Because we're like, hmm. so this is where we have to use our, we know whatever it is, it has to add up to negative six, right? Six X, I should, I should say. But we do know for sure that this is X because X times X is gonna give us an X squared, right? And some people may argue, well, what about X squared times one? And I'm like, you're not wrong, but X squared is not a length. It is an area, right? That's why this here is an area. So that's why it would not be X squared times one. Just saying. All right, 
So what could this be? So what times what would be 16? Well, eight and two. If I go eight and two, then I could get six by subtracting. So let's try that. So what's two times, uh, two times x is two x, and uh, x times eight is gonna be eight x. Which one of these two has to be negative? And you'd be like, oh, since it's, the, it's negative, the bigger one has to be negative then. You're like, oh yeah. Okay, so just don't, when, if you change that, you gotta change this guy up here. Okay, so now when we add it up, so negative eight times two is negative 16. So that is correct, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those sides right there. And we're going to write them out because you're not done. If you finish the box, that doesn't mean you're done. It just means that you finish the box. Okay, so now you got to actually factor. So it's going to be x minus 8, and this is going to be x plus 2. We know it's a plus because that's a positive. Okay. All right, so that's how you do the box method way. Um, taking a look at Eleanor. Actually, since we did Eleanor in the if you want to try this, please try this, okay? But I'm going to do Xavier's, okay? So Xavier's going to be over here. So 2x squared minus 3x minus 5, All right? Let's factor this the way, the way we learned it with crisscross method. The box method is over here. You know that Xavier did it correctly because he has a thumbs up. All right, so uh, we look here. Coefficient is 2, which means what times what is 2? Or like, okay, 1 times 2. Okay, well, that's easy enough. But then what about this 5? We remember we want to multiply to five, but add to a three, add or subtract to a three. So we're like, okay, let's try five and two. Okay, so I go one times two is two. One times, or two times five is 10. Ooh, uh, it's either gonna give me, if I add them, it's a 10, it's a 12, and if I subtract, it's an eight. Not close to that. So maybe I should, oh, my dear, you guys are probably like, what are you doing this, Lee? That's not even the right numbers. Sorry, that should have been a one because five times one is five. Okay, let me try this again. So this is 10, one times one is one. So if I add them or subtract them, I'm definitely not gonna get a three. So, okay, I know I, this is it's not one and five, five and one. Maybe I switch the numbers then because there's no other combinations I could do, right? So then I'll try one and, oops, one and five, okay? So then now one times five is five, two times one is two, ooh. I can get a three from here. Which one has to be negative? I always like to do my negatives last. Well, it should be negative five, right? Because the negative is the one that wins out. So I'm gonna include that negative right here. You can't forget that. I forget that sometimes if I make that mistake. Okay, so then when I add these up, it's negative three, just like that. And then we notice that this guy right here, same thing as that guy right here, which means we got the right answer. Okay, so we're there. We just need to write them out. So I'm gonna go straight across. This is right, I do, do my colors here the same. Straight across, okay, that was kind of supposed to be straight across. And then this should, this is gonna be, it's really important that you go straight across. If you don't, if you're going crisscross at this point, you're getting the wrong answer. So this is gonna be x, x was a plus one, and two x, remember it's a coefficient of two, uh, minus five. That's gonna be your, your factor, it's gonna be in factor form right there. Okay, and if you notice right here, what does Xavier say? Two X minus five. Yep, we got two X minus five, X plus one. Yay, X plus one. Does it matter that they're flipped? It doesn't matter because we're multiplying them. So they could be one X plus, uh, X plus one and then two X minus five or two X minus five, X, X plus one. Doesn't matter because okay, when you multiply, like two times three, three times two, still six. So it doesn't matter about that order. All right, um, we're gonna go forward to here. So if you guys notice right here, I need a whisper. I feel like I'm losing my throat, losing my throat, <laughs> losing my voice. Okay, so if you notice right here, the big pattern is, um, if, you're, uh, if you notice these guys, they're all add up, they all multiply to 15, and the x squares are all the same, there's no coefficient there. And then, um, just the middle parts seem to be a little bit different, right? So literally it's just x plus five, x plus x, x and five and x and three, just the pluses and minuses are gonna change. So depending on what they are, that's gonna give us a different answer, okay? And the one thing I wanted you to notice was, oh, and if you didn't do this, just pause and do it, okay? 
you can feel free to pause me. I will not be offended. Okay, <laughs> then. So if you notice, if they're both the same, okay, if this, if they're constant, right, the last thing that we're, the two things that we're multiplying, the numbers, if they're positive, that means they either got to be positive or they got to be both negative. Okay, they cannot be mixed because if they're mixed, then that's going to be negative because positive times positive is what? A positive and negative times negative is a positive. Okay, are you positive? Yes, I'm positive, right? And now if it's a negative right here, which means that one of them has to be negative, you can't have both be negative. So one of them is going to be a negative. And how do you know which one's going to be negative? Well, that's where the first one comes in. Well, remember, they have to add up, right? They have to add up to uh, whichever one it was. Uh, add up. So if this one is positive, that means that the, the bigger one's going to be positive. And if it's negative, then that means the bigger one's going to be negative. But honestly, you don't have to memorize any of this. These are just patterns to help you to recognize. You do it the crisscross method way. You don't have to remember, you just have to use some logic to figure out, okay, do I want a positive three or a negative three? Or do I want a positive, you know what I mean? What, what, what do I want? Like, what is this middle term telling me, right? So for example, if we take number uh, B2, let's say, so I'm gonna do B2, X squared minus 10 X plus 24, right? I'm like, okay, cool. My first term is one, that makes it easy, one and one. My last term is 24. So what multiplies to 24 but adds up, adds or subtracts to 10? I'm like, okay, it's not one in 24 because that's, and most people don't think of one in 24. So most people think of like either four, six, and eight and three. Eight and three, right, add up to 11. So that's close to 10, but that's not 10. And if I subtract them, that's definitely not gonna give me 10. So six and four, yep, that's gonna be my 10. So I'm gonna use six and four. So the question is, which one do I put my negatives on? So I don't usually worry about that until a little later on. We go one times six is six, one times four is four. Okay, now, um, I know that when I add them up, it'll be 10, but I want a negative 10 instead of positive 10. So what I do, boom, boom, boom. So that makes it, if they're both negative, I know it's gonna be negative 10, right? And then I just can't forget to add these back, add these into there. Okay, so that's gonna be negative 10, which is exactly the same. Now remember, we're going to go straight across. So this guy is the same as this guy. Happy days. Go straight across. Straight across. So literally, it's black. So I'm going to get x minus 6, x minus 4. Back to form. Okay, so you, that's how I like to think about it. Like doing it this way, it gets too confusing for me. If you like it this way, then go for it, memorize it, think about it. But I don't like memorizing stuff. Uh, if I understand why, then I will remember it forever in a day, okay? All right, so let's take a look here. We're gonna move on, go on. All right, number 10. Nobody's done this yet, so pause, do it, okay? Do a thing. Now, if you remember, you need to, I would just couple this down. Actually, I don't need to copy that down. So what we're going to do is, remember in the beginning of class where we're talking about GCFs? GCFs will help you a lot here because we can factor like this here, but these are like pretty big numbers, right? And I'm not, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to be like, well, what goes in all of them? Well, a four, four goes into four X squared and the 24, but definitely not the 22. So then I'm like, I'm going to have to resort to a two. So I'm going to factor out a two. And what do I have left? Two X squared plus 11x plus 12. Okay, these are much smaller numbers, right? So it's much easier to factor with smaller numbers than with the like four and the 22 and the 24, right? So now that's why it's really important to first check. Can I fact, can I, do I have a GCF that I can factor out? And if you can, do it. And if it's one, then don't do that. Because one, you can do that for days. Okay, you'll still be stuck. I'm like, I'm still trying to factor out the GCF, it's one. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. Let's try some numbers here. So two, if my coefficient is two, oh, well, one and two, right? It's a prime number, it's the only even prime number. And 12, it has to add up to one, but we have this two here. So let me try some smaller ones, like three and four. Let's try three and four, okay? Because three times four is 12. Okay, so I'm gonna one times four is four. Two times six, oh, two times three is six. Ooh, if I add those up, I'm definitely not, add or subtract, I'm not gonna get an 11. Okay, so it's not three and four. What if I switch them? So like four and three, instead of three and four. So let's go ahead, four, three. 
So the one times three is three, two times four is eight. Ooh, I can do this one plus 11. So, and this is going to be, remember, this is plus and plus, so we're good. Um, so I'm going to go straight across. Other number right here. Uh, I wish I was a student so I could highlight all these things in my book. So exciting. So again, we're going to go straight across. So it's going to be x plus 4. And this one's going to be x, oop, 2x. See, I left out space there. 2x plus 3. Okay, factored. Done. Oh, I forgot. Did you see what I forgot? Do you know? Right. Don't forget that too. Right. So remember this guy on the outside, we got to make sure we put it back in because if we don't write it in there, that means when we multiply these out, we're going to end up getting 2x squared plus 11x plus 12, which is not the same as 4x squared plus 22x plus 24, right? We're going to be half off, right? So that's why we don't forget to add back in that too, because now it's equivalent. Okay. And so that's, that. there we go. Happy days. Okay, dokie. And let me see if I can box that. That's me answer. All right, so when we're doing the, uh, we're just gonna bring it down to the solving for quadratic equations in general. Um, and if you note right here, uh, that negative three, we don't want it to be negative three, we want it to equal zero. For any quadratic that we're trying to solve, always has to be zero. So please make sure you put it in your notebook. That zero always has to be zero, okay? So we can use a zero product property. When the world is zero product property, it's like the book knew that, right? It's basically saying that so you can have the parentheses equal to zero, okay? It's this guy right here. So when we're setting them equal to zero right here, that's what we're doing, okay? So you gotta make sure we do that. So literally, um, so we're adding three on both sides, right? And then again, uh, coefficients are one and one. This is gonna be uh, one and three. I would have probably put in the negatives in afterwards, right? So, but but if you could think of that right away, then that's fine. You can totally do that. Don't you don't have to be like me, right? Not everybody's like me, and that's hard to understand why not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm getting tired. All right. So again, one times negative one is negative one. One times negative three is negative three. And we add them up. Yep, it's negative four, which is correct. This is the same as the middle term there. Now we're just going to go straight across. We're just going to be x minus one, x minus three. Okay. And then we're setting that equal to zero. Now, what is the whole reason for that? So that we can find out what X is, right? That's the whole point of this factoring stuff, right? So, oh, there we go. X minus one is equal to zero. Mm -hmm. X minus three is equal to zero. Add one on both sides. That's how you get the one. Add three to both sides. That's how you get the three. Um, you can write your answer like this. X is equal to X comma three. Don't put parentheses around it because it's not a point. We're talking about two X values, okay? The reason why I can do this is because you have an equation. If you have an equation, you can just go x equals blah, okay? All right, now I asked you guys, well, if you look at Jana and Reese, they get a thumbs down. What did they do wrong? Take a look, pause. Okay, I guess I don't have to pause. You can, you can pause me. I don't have to pause. <laughs> I will, so if you notice right here, okay, so there looks like they're doing the G, GCF, okay, so x and then parentheses x plus 6, right, is equal to 7, and then what did they do? So they said x equal to 7 and x plus 6 equal to 7. Ha, can't do that. Why not? What times what gives you 7? It's a whole bunch. You could do like 1 times 7. You could do 2 times 3.5. A lot, there's a lot of different possibilities there, right? So that's why can't do that. You can't just say, oh, it must equal seven. We don't know that. So what you have to do, it, you have to make sure it has to be zero. So th sh this person should have subtracted the six out, okay? It should have been x squared plus six x. If you subtract the seven, it's going to be minus seven is equal to zero. Now, now we can do a thing, okay? So we'll do this very smallly. One, one, and then seven, one, because one times seven is seven. So one times one is one, one times seven is seven. And it uh, looks like we're gonna have to subtract to get the six, right? Good thing because that multiplies to a seven, negative seven. 
So it looks like it's going to be negative one. Put the negative one on the front. Oh, I meant just six. Same thing as that. So this should be x plus seven, x minus one equals zero. And then so we're going to write down x. Ooh, let me just write over here. x plus seven is equal to zero because now that is equal to zero. We can use the zero product property, right? and set them equal to zero. So x is equal to, subtract seven on both sides, negative seven. Here, add one on both sides, one. Boom, that's what Jana should have gotten. Did Jana get that? Ah, is she always gonna get the right answer this way or at least one of them right the that way? No, and you feel like Miss Lee, but the only difference is that this was a negative and that was a, that, that's a negative and that's a positive. Don't work in banking. Okay, don't be an engineer. Not a good idea if you're saying, oh, but it's just a negative. Bridges will fall because of that, because of that exact thinking. But it's just, it's just a negative. I mean, what, it's not a big deal. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move on. Okay, what about this guy right here? Um, Reese, what is Reese doing? Okay, factor the left-hand side, okay. That equals each other. And look what Reese did. Batteries. How could how could she? Okay, so yeah, she did the exact same thing that Jana did. Not okay. All right, so she said it equal. She didn't use a zero product property. She didn't do that right. Zero product pro property, not six product property. It doesn't work like that. So it's zero. So um, let's try this out again. So x squared plus five x plus six is equal to six. Oh, that's a six. We got to make that into a zero. Right hand side has to be zero. And you're like, okay. That's great and all, Miss Lee, but now, now we don't have a third term. Now what? Now, now I'm stuck. You know what you do now? You do the GCF, right? Because there's it, it literally equals nothing. Okay, if you want to do it the the what is it way the crisscross way, you can, but it, this one's much just easier to just do GCF, right? So this is going to be what what's what's the GCF of x squared plus five x? Yeah, x. And then, so we're going to go x plus 5 equals, and then now we have two products. We have a product, product. Anyways, we're multiplying two things, and it's equal to 0. So those two things can both equal 0. So we're going to go x equals 0. Oh, the solution already. And then x plus 5 is equal to 0. So we got literally x is equal to 0, comma, and we would subtract 5 on both sides, so it would be negative 5. Boom. Just like that. Okay, that's how you solve that. Just like that. Um, okay, we're gonna do some more factoring. If you have not done these yet, again, press pause, do a thing, let your brain try and figure it out. If you're really stuck, then push play. Okay, but try to try to do it by yourself. So again, this is one and one because the coefficient is one. What times what will give me a twelve? I'm thinking probably and add up to an eight. Not three and four, because that won't give me an eight. So probably six and two. I'm gonna go six and two. And I know that this is gonna be a negative eight, so well, I'll deal with them later. One times two is two. One times six is six. That gives me an eight. Well, I want it to be a negative eight, so we know that both of those are negative. So I'm just going negative, negative. So it's gonna be x minus six, x minus two. Bam. Oh, but it's equal to zero. I forgot, I'm sorry. And if you set those equal to zero, and if you go straight to the answer, that's fine too. But remember, it's gonna be x minus six is equal to zero, x minus two is equal to zero. That is a good habit to come up with. Then you can go x is equal to two and six. If you wrote six and two, that's fine too. No, that doesn't matter. All right, so that's the answer for that. All right, what are you gonna try for B? So again, coefficients are one. This is equal to negative 24. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. You see that good? <laughs> okay. So uh, six and four, I can't get to five with six and four by adding or subtracting. Eight and three, yeah, eight times three is 24 and adds up to five some way. So eight and three, All right? So one times eight is eight. 1 times 3 is 3. Now I want to get a negative 5, which means that my 8 has to be negative to get that negative 5. 
don't forget to add it right back here again. All right, yay. And then we're gonna go straight across, so x minus five, oh, eight, and x plus three, and that equals to zero. So again, zero product property, saying we can have those equal to each factor equal to zero. So x is equal to, add eight on both sides, get eight. Add or subtract negative, subtract three on both sides, that's gonna be negative three. That's gonna be your answer. Let's change up the color. All right, we try it again. All right, so one and one. What times what is 75? 25 and three? So 25 times three is 75, but I'm not gonna to get to 10. Another one, maybe 15, and what's 75 divided by 15? 15, oh, 75 divided by 15. Five, oh, 15 and five. I can definitely get a 10 with that. All right, so one times 15 is 15. One times five is five. Uh, which one has to be negative? It definitely has to be that five, right? Because the 10 is positive, this is gonna be 10. All right, so going straight across, we get x plus 15, x minus five equals zero, right? So again, zero product property says we can have it equal to zero. So x minus five is equal to zero. So x is equal to negative 15 and five. Boom, just like that. All right, coming in with some problems here. Okay, this is my binomial again. Okay, and so like that is not gonna be a good idea. So what we're gonna do is just gonna go GCF. So X times X minus 11 equals zero. Well, they're already now products. So it's gonna be X equals to zero and X minus 11 is equal to zero. So what is my X equal to? Zero and 11, okay. I hope you're feeling a little bit more comfortable with this because it's gonna get a little bit harder, just as much. All right, okay, not that much. It's just like adding one step. All right, so if you look at this right here, um, okay, now this is not equal to zero. See all the other ones? They all equaled zero, so we didn't have any problems there, but now it's equal. Now how in the world do I get that my negative seven out? Okay, what do I do? Just add seven. So it's gonna be x squared plus eight x plus seven is equal to, that's a plus and that's a seven is equal to zero. Now it looks like what we've been doing, okay? So, and remember I cannot combine eight x and seven because they are not like terms. So don't give me like a 15 x, it's not 15 x because eight x plus seven, not like terms. I just wrote it underneath the eight x because I didn't have any other room. All right, so. Uh, we're gonna do, oh, that's a seven, not a negative one. All right, so this is one and one, and this is going to be one and seven because seven's a prime number, that's all we got. So one times seven is seven, one times one is one, and it adds up to eight, which is what we want. So we don't have to worry about negatives here. So again, we're gonna go straight across, x plus one times x plus seven equals zero. Then it's gonna be x plus one is equal to zero, x plus seven is equal to zero. Please make sure for any test, you need to write it in factored form. Don't just go straight down to x plus one is equal to zero and x plus seven is equal to zero because you have not technically shown me the factored form. You haven't, okay? So please make sure you do both of those steps. And then what is x equal to? x is equal to, subtract one on both sides, negative one, uh, subtract seven on both sides, negative seven. Just like that, okay? We're almost there. Got this. All right. Oh my dear, this this is this is a big mess. What in the world do we do here? I'm just going to write it over here. So x squared minus five x is equal to thirteen x minus eighty one. We're just going to get everything, move it over to the left. Okay, just move it over to the left. So this is what literally what I'm going to do. I'm going to go. Well, I'm going to subtract thirteen x plus eighty one. I'm going to subtract 13x. I'm going to try to keep that with that x, and then plus 81. Right, so now we have, boom, boom, those cancel out. What do I have all left on the right-hand side? Zero. That's what we want. 
Okay, and I have my x squared, and then my minus three minus five x minus thirteen x is minus eighteen x, and then I have my plus eighty one. Okay, you didn't have to write it that way. That's just how I wrote it. If you want to do it one step at a time, that's fine too. All right, and then from here we're gonna just go. Well, now we can factor, right? So we're gonna go one and one because the coefficient is one. What times what is eighty one adds up to eighteen? got to be nine and nine. All right, and okay, I'm looking at this. Okay, I know definitely that this can be nine plus nine, which is 18, but I want it to be negative. So it's gonna be negative and negative. Okay, so one times nine is gonna be negative nine. One times negative nine is negative nine. It's gonna be negative 18. All right, so we're gonna go straight across. I'm gonna go right here like this, and you're gonna go x minus nine, x minus nine zero. So you're like, wait a minute, let's leave this is the exact same thing. So x equal to nine. It's a double root. This came out two times, right? So this one is what we call, I'm going to just put in parentheses here, double root. And uh, once you get a double root, and technically is what we can say, this is actually a multiplicity. So you don't have to know this yet. This is not tested, but no, just multiplicity of two. So nine mult two. That's a multiplicity. Double root at two or at nine. That's just what it means. Okay, so now I told you that there was going to be a fraction tip. Here we are finally at the fraction tip. So if you don't like fractions and if you don't like to deal with them and you're like, I don't even know how I'm going to factor that. Like that's, I don't even know, right? The best way to deal with this, and maybe I don't know if you guys know, let me make, write this in black. So 2 thirds x squared minus 5 6 x is equal to 0. What I like to do is I like to multiply everything by the LCM, least common multiple. So what does 3 and 6, because notice I have a 3 and a 6 here, what do both 3 and 6 both go into? And if you said 12, you would not be wrong, but there was a smaller number, like 6, right? because six goes into six, right? And three goes into six. So I'm gonna literally multiply, hmm, let me change that to a different color here. Yeah. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by six. Cause you know, if you multiply both sides by six, we're keeping everything equal, right? So now if you notice what happens when I do that, is that six divided by, I like to divide first, right? Six divided by three is two and two times two, is four, so x squared. Now we're gonna distribute to here. Six divided by six is what? One. One times five, and zero times six, zero. The beauty of zero, right? Even though you multiply it by six, it's still zero. It really doesn't matter, right? Um, if you wanna do that again, rewind it and hear that again, okay? Super important. If you want to multiply first, you can go six times two, I just like to reduce first. So six times two, which is 12, 12 divided by three, that's still four. Six times three, uh, six times five, which is 30, 30 divided by six is five, okay? So that's all I'm doing. I just like to divide first because it makes the number smaller. I don't have to worry about big numbers, okay? And then from here, oh, we know how to do this, right? These binomials, they both have X's in them. We know how to do that, right? So this is what we're gonna be doing. So just factor out the X. So we get 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. Set both of these guys equal to 0. So x is equal to 0 and x is equal oh, 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. All right, let's do some work here. So we literally get four x is equal to zero and four x minus five is equal to zero. So we're gonna add five to both sides. So four x is equal to five and then divide both sides by four. So you literally get x equal to four fifths. Ha ha, just kidding. Ah, too many. X equal to five over four, my bad. Remember we, ah, too far. Go down, oh, too far down. I can do this. 
Okay, so it's going to be five fourths, and don't forget the zero. Okay, so remember, um, to go back to the fraction tip, uh, multiply both sides. Uh, by the LCM, least common multiple. You don't have to do the least. You could you could have done 12 for those two numbers, but it's just gonna give you big numbers and it's just better to do LCM, okay? Um, yeah, so there we go. All right, so that was my tip for you. And then for H, good job guys, if you're here this far. All right, I think this is a long video today. So this is gonna be one and one. And what times what is 12? Oh, there was a little bit of delay. What times what is 12 is gonna be six and two, but six and two, we can't get uh, 10. What else? Three and four? Well, three and four, we can only get seven and one. Uh, one and 12? But we still get 11, so then what do we do here? Hmm. There must be a way to solve this. There actually is a way to solve this, but we haven't learned it yet. And we're gonna learn it soon. Okay, so we'll think about this. And what if it's, then we'll say not possible yet. You need to put the yet down because the yet is meaning that we're, we don't know it, but we will soon. Okay, so not yet. But pretty soon, it's, it's very hopeful. So not just not possible to solve, because that just means like period, dot, not possible to solve, right? So um, yeah, so for, we'll do that tomorrow, learn that tomorrow. So here, um, homework is going to be these five guys. Please make sure you're doing the homework uh, reflections and checking your work, please. That's super important, all right?